Hi, I'm Michael Chu, and I'm the lead writer of Overwatch. And I'm here to break down every character in Overwatch. We're going to start with the offense heroes. Doomfist started in the game as simply a name. We had this movie that announced Overwatch to the world, and one of the characters mentions Doomfist, and just that name was so interesting that people have been asking us for years, when are we going to see Doomfist as a hero? And we on the team were also really excited to someday get to make him. It's actually a few years ago was the first time that we even did artwork for him. And one of the amazing things about that first look is that for years we didn't touch it until we were actually going to make the hero, and we pulled it out again and we found that we still loved it. There are a number of Doomfist Doomfist in the history of the Overwatch universe, so it's sort of a title that's been carried by different characters. The original Doomfist was a really good guy, one of the heroes of the Omnic Crisis, but uh, the current Doomfist, most people would say a little bit more of a villain. Genji. Genji and Hanzo originally started as one hero, but we had designed so much stuff for these two characters for the idea of this ninja-samurai hybrid that we ended up splitting them into two characters. Hanzo in development was called Bow Ninja, and so Genji was called Sword Ninja. The story of Genji and Hanzo as characters came from a place that you might not expect it. Uh, I really like watching all these food documentaries, and I watched this one, Jiro Dreams of Sushi, which has a subplot about these two brothers, and I thought a lot about the idea of this older brother who had to inherit kind of his father's restaurant and carry on that legacy and then the younger brother who is free to do sort of whatever he wants and so Genji is the younger brother he doesn't have the baggage of Hanzo he doesn't have to worry about carrying on the family legacy and ultimately that creates a lot of friction between Hanzo and Genji where Hanzo thinks that Genji's got the good life he doesn't have any pressure Genji doesn't want any part of what his family's up to, and ultimately this explodes in battle between Hanzo and Genji, leaving Genji uh, kind of the way you see him now, which is that he was almost killed, and he had to get all this cybernetic enhancement done by Overwatch that uh, made him into the hero that you sort of know today. Genji is voiced by Gaku Space. He has lots of lines both in English and Japanese, and one of the great things having the help from Gaku is that he's sort of able to tell me, like, that doesn't really work in Japanese, let me help you out there, because I'm not a fluent Japanese speaker. McCree. When we were naming him, we were trying to come up with the perfect cowboy name. And we had these two lists of names, like first names and last names, and we went through everything. Nothing was feeling quite right, and someone suggested, hey, what about the name Jesse McCree? Uh, Jesse is a d uh, designer at Blizzard, and so we heard that name and we're like, okay, and we kind of stack rank Jesse McCree against every other name we'd come up with, and at the end of it, we still thought Jesse McCree was the best cowboy name, so we ended up going with it. Jesse had to sign over his name to us, and so now he will forever be linked to our favorite cowboy character. McCree is voiced by the incredibly talented Matthew Mercer. Funny story about casting Mercer as McCree is that he originally saw the game when it was announced at BlizzCon. He said like he really wanted to be a part of the game. At that point, we hadn't actually started working on McCree yet. But we had this poster that had all the original heroes lined up. And because we like doing things like this, we snuck in a couple heroes on the side. And one of them was this cowboy. And Matt told me once, he said, you know, he looked at that art and he said, you know, that might be a character I could do. And that's how it ended up. Farah's story is really interesting because her whole life she wanted to join the Overwatch organization. Her mom, Anna, is a really prominent member of it, and also her father was a public servant, and so that sort of ran in her blood, and her dream was to someday be able to do the same thing as a member of Overwatch. But before she had that opportunity, Overwatch got shut down, and so now she's a member of Helix Security, which is sort of like an international security company, and she's dreaming of the day that maybe she could join Overwatch again, and hopefully uh, she'll get that chance. Reaper. He was one of the original heroes, and we told very little about him, but since then we've delved into his backstory a lot more. Reaper is voiced by Keith Ferguson, who is one of the nicest people that I've ever met, so I like to say that when we're doing voice sessions with Reaper, it's probably a little bit of therapy for him. When we did our Uprising event, we were able to actually, for the first time, show Reyes before he became Reaper, and so he appears as a voice uh, over the communication set, and I think everyone was so surprised by it, they're like, wait, wait, who is that? And he says, like, you know, Reyes here, and everyone freaked out because they had never heard kind of what he was like before he became Reaper. Soldier 76. He's actually the personal creation of our creative director, Chris Metzen. So a character that was near and dear to his heart, which he was kind enough to let us incorporate into Overwatch. And so because of that, we're all very, uh, we're very careful and we, we really want to make this character that, that Chris loves. Soldier 76 is voiced by Fred Tatashore. 
Sombra. Sombra is voiced by Carolina Ravasa. One of the things that we were re really looking for with Sombra's voice is we wanted someone who had the attitude, but also had this sense of like competency. And I think Carolina really brings that to the role. We also wanted Sombra to be very tough. And one thing that I think really separates her from some of the other Overwatch characters is that a lot of the characters in Overwatch have this like heightened way of speaking. They're either very serious or they're almost playing a role. But Sombra almost sounds like someone that you would meet on the street and she talks in a very naturalistic way and I think it really sets her apart from some of the other characters. Tracer. She is so bright and optimistic and cheerful. Like when you hear her on the battlefield, she just cuts through with that sunny voice. And one of the things that you might not think of that is really iconic to Tracer is her giggle. And we had to do so many giggles just to like get the perfect, you know, hee hee. Well, that's not a good giggle, but we worked with a actress, Cara Theobald, and she has this natural giggle. So we've probably had her giggle more than anything or any other character. And we have this library and uh, it's always fun when we get to do that. All right, so next we're gonna talk about our defense heroes, Bastion. It probably has one of the most interesting development stories for its ultimate, which is that it transforms into a tank. That is probably the 70th or 80th ultimate ability we created for Bastion. We had trouble deciding what fit the character. It's kind of this robot that's exploring nature and is really fun and kind. Some of the other ultimate abilities we had were, you know, pull out a little remote control and it would drive around this little drone that would then explode. It's that doesn't seem quite right. One time it flew, and eventually we went back to the story of Bastion and said, like, what is this character? And the base idea is Bastion transforms. And so we thought, like, is there one more thing we could transform Bastion into? And ultimately, we ended up with a tank. We feel like that actually really fits the character, and the mobility that Bastion gets in that mode makes a lot of sense. Bastion is actually voiced by Chris Metzen, who is our creative director. He goes into the booth, and we have this whole processing setup that transforms the sounds that he makes into kind of the beeps and the boops and the words. Chris will tell you that it's more like playing a musical instrument than a direct translation. And I always have fun with these sessions because I tell him to do stuff like, oh, I need you to kind of sound scared. So maybe like a ooh or, you know, something like that. And he'll have to like yell to make sounds like that happen. So there's this big disconnect between what the sounds he makes and then what you ultimately hear are. And one of the hardest, most challenging things is to have Bastion make sounds musically. And once I had Chris do that the first time, I decided Side, I loved it. So Bastion will hum Christmas tunes, he will hum kind of little musical notes, and that part is so hard for Chris to do because, again, he can sing something in tune, but it will not translate that way. And so I'll have him there trying to whistle the Overwatch tune for like 10 minutes. Hanzo. He has an ultimate ability where he fires one arrow which summons a sort of spirit dragon that destroys like everything in its path and in development it was kind of originally blocked in using these really simple geometric shapes and it kind of, it looked like a caterpillar. So the team would just yell during playtests, oh, look out, it's the caterpillar coming. Hanzo is voiced by Paul Nakauchi. Junkrat. If you look at him from a design standpoint, you can see that he's lost limbs and his hair is literally on fire because he's just fearless when it comes to explosives. Junkrat is voiced by Chris Parson. May is a beloved Overwatch character. We cast in China to find someone who could speak Mandarin and also English to be able to do the role of May, and uh, we ended up working with Elise Zhang, who, if you've ever met her, is basically May the character. She is happy and cute and enthusiastic, and it's just been really fun to see her in that role. Torbjorn. Torbjorn, from a visual standpoint, is interesting because the Overwatch team, when developing the look of Overwatch, wanted to take this character and sort of evolve the look of art that had come before from other Blizzard games. So when you look at Torbjorn, you could definitely see the inspiration of the dwarves of Warcraft. But we really wanted to do something else with it, so we added kind of the more futuristic elements to him and turned him into an Overwatch hero. Widowmaker. Recently, we added a map to the game. It was the Chateau, and we were creating this French manor, and we were trying to decide, well, what should we do with this? And we thought, like, you know who would live in a manor? Widowmaker. And so we decided that the Chateau was actually the ancestral home of Widowmaker's family that she's now returned to. And so when you go to the map, you can kind of see that she's in the process of redecorating and refurbishing the place. So now Widowmaker lives in a castle, and she wants you to leave. The next group of heroes are tanks. Diva. 
ever since the Omnic crisis, Korea is routinely attacked, you know, every couple of years or so by this massive Omnic that comes out of the sea and mech pilots, these mecha pilots come out to defend the country. For decades, Korea used drones to fight them off, but then one one day when this Omnic monstrosity reappeared, it had this ability to jam all their communications. And so Korea was forced to employ pilots to be able to uh, fight the threat. And so when they were looking at who the best candidates to pilot these mech suits were, they decided to turn to the professional gamers of Korea because of their abilities and their uh, gameplay strategies and their APM. And so Diva is sort of considered to be the best gamers in Korea to be a member of the squad. And so she's in the squad with these other pilots who, you know, have similar skills like her. There's some other gamers and then you've got like pilots or like an F1 driver. When we were designing Arisa, we wanted to create this character that sort of pushed the visual design language of Overwatch. And so when you look at her, she's quadrupedal, she has really interesting design elements, and she sort of doesn't look like any other hero we've made before, and certainly doesn't look like a lot of the other robot or omnic heroes that we've created before. But because of that, there were some challenges. We found that it was difficult to relate to her because some aspects were so unique. And I remember that we were in a brainstorm, and we were always talking about who Arisa is, what was she built for. We had this idea that she was like kind of like a police enforcer for the city of Nimbani. But I had this idea, what if Arisa was actually built by a child and the character of Ify appeared? She's this young, genius AI roboticist who decided that because she was inspired by all these stories of heroes that she could build her own hero. And so she took kind of the pieces of this old mech and then improved them, added a personality core. And when you think about Arisa, thinking about this character Ify really helps to bind the story ideas together. You can see like Arisa as this character that was made by this idealistic young girl. Arisa in the story of Overwatch has sort of just been switched on like a month or so ago. So she's still really learning about the world around her and learning what it means to be a part of that. Kind of reminiscent of another hero, Reinhardt, and one of the fun things about that is that Arisa really looks up to Reinhardt. We joke that Arisa and Ify probably sat in the lab together watching kind of cartoons or seeing stories about the old Overwatch, and one thing is that a lot of Arisa's emotes and her animations are sort of callbacks to Reinhardt. In fact, she even says some of his lines. Arisa is voiced by Sherelle Skeet. Reinhardt. He is the first hero that I worked on. We were trying to come up with the story for this character who uses a big shield, has this giant rocket hammer, and is wearing this crusader armor, just armored head to toe, like a medieval but also futuristic knight. And we had this idea, you know, he's so big and larger than life that we wanted a character that fit that. And we drew inspiration from kind of the Don Quixote story. He's currently the oldest character in the Overwatch hero lineup. And he sort of has seen it all. He's been fighting ever since the early days, and he was sort of forced into retirement, and now he's freelancing around Europe uh, trying to right wrongs. And we have this idea that he's, he's seen so much, and he, he probably should hang it up. Maybe he's taken a few too many knocks on his head. But he's this guy who still feels like he has so much to do. One thing you can see is uh, in some of the stories, he'll have his armor off, and you could just see the wreckage of like three decades of combat on his body. He's just scarred, and he has cuts and bruises all the time. Time. Reinhardt is voiced by Darren DePaul. Roadhog. Roadhog is actually an older character. So Roadhog lived in the outback before everything kind of fell apart. And so for him, when he sees Junkertown and he sees what's become of his home, it's, it's very sad for him. Roadhog has also had to find a way to survive in this cutthroat, unrelentingly harsh wasteland. And so that's really changed him. You know, he was the sort of character who just wanted to be left alone to kind of live on his farm. But now he's had to do things to survive in this environment. And he's really become a much darker character. Roadhog is voiced by Josh Petersdorf. Winston. We're always coming back to Winston to look at the kind of emotional center of the Overwatch universe, which is really amusing when you think about it because Overwatch is a story about Earth and we like to explore kind of the diversity of Earth and all these different places and heroes from different backgrounds. But the one character, perhaps appropriately, who carries all of this is the gorilla. And he's not even from Earth, he's from the moon. He's sort of taken in all these lessons and all these feelings that people have. They started as stories, but now they're things that he truly believes in and fights for. Winston is voiced by Crispin Freeman. 
Zarya was created so that we have this really strong female character and we were inspired by kind of Olympic weightlifters. It must have been around that time that, you know, we were watching competition and we thought like, wouldn't this be a cool character? And so we came up with this idea of this, this person who was about to prove that she was the strongest in the world. But at that time, Omnix attacked her home in Russia and she decided that it was more important to her to fight than to compete. And so she never had the moment to kind of get that validation that she had trained her whole life for. So instead, she gave it all up and she became just another soldier on the front line. Zarya is voiced by Dolia Gavonsky. Last but not least are the support heroes. Anna existed as a character long before she actually was a playable hero in the game. When we were developing Farah, we knew that we wanted Farah to sort of come from this lineage of heroes, and the most important one of those being Anna, who was Overwatch's second in command, this amazing sniper who fought during the Omnic Crisis, and someone who Farah really looked up to. We wanted to add a support character who was a little more skill-based, so we thought maybe a character who, like, snipe healed would be something that would appeal to characters who usually played more uh, skillful characters, but we already had a sniper in the lineup, Widowmaker, and we were wondering if the game could really support two snipers. We remembered that we had this character in the backstory, Anna, and one of the interesting things about Anna is that she eventually uh, disappears. People believe that she's dead, but in actuality she suffers this injury in a sniper duel with Widowmaker. She loses her eye and that actually causes her to kind of rethink what she wants to do with her life. And it changes her a little bit. It really puts this focus on her for protecting people. In her younger days, Anna as a sniper really saw her role as protecting people through her role as a sniper. So she would kill people to make sure that the people that she was on missions with could get home safe. But in the modern day, she has this weapon which is able to heal people from range. And so we're sort of able to show how her character changed over time. Anna is voiced by Aisha Selim, who we actually recorded all the way from Cairo. We wanted to make this really tough older female character because we felt like, you know, entertainment and the world could just use more of them. And so we, when we settled on the idea of making the sniper, we thought Anna would be perfect because obviously as one of the older heroes in the game, we could show that she's still really powerful and still competent and still out there a hero just as much as the younger characters in the cast. Lucio. Lucio is voiced by Johnny Cruz, and when we heard Johnny audition for the role, he had so much enthusiasm and life. Once we heard his voice, we felt like there was no way that Lucio could be anyone else. He has that personality. He is exciting, and he is happy, and he's just like all about bringing people up and together. Mercy. Mercy ultimately leaves the Overwatch organization because she has this conflict as a kind of doctor or physician, someone who's a healer. She feels like sometimes Overwatch is too militaristic in her goals and ultimately now she's just working as a medic, as a doctor in sort of places in the world where there are conflicts and where she feels like she can do good. Recently actually we made some changes to Mercy so she now has a additional ability called Valkyrie in which she can just fly around the battlefield and her abilities become more charged and she's really that kind of battlefield angel. Mercy is voiced by Lucy Pohl. Moira. Moira is a very controversial scientist. She basically believes that there are too many restrictions placed upon scientific research. She doesn't believe in kind of taking time. She believes that humans should be a little more aggressive in how they approach scientific discovery. And in that way, she actually lines up her philosophy very well with the scientists of Oasis. Oasis is a city that was built in the Arabian desert in Iraq, where scientists who kind of had the same ideas about how science should work founded this place in the desert where they could kind of work on science without any restrictions. And so Moira is controversial to the greater scientific community, but to the scientists of Oasis, she's sort of right up their alley. And so they recruited her to become the minister of genetics. So she's in charge of genetics research in Oasis. We found that people were really desiring another support character. We felt the same way. And so we created Moira. We wanted her to have a little bit different gameplay. And again, we thought that the idea of a villainous healer would be really fun. When we looked at the Talon characters, we thought there really needed to be someone to take care of them. Also, from a story perspective, Moira has a lot of relationships to different characters in the Overwatch story. Moira was part of Blackwatch, so she knows everyone who was in the Blackwatch organization. She was specifically recruited by Reyes because Reyes sort of identified her talent with genetics, and Reyes might have had some genetics issues that he wanted some scientific help with. Before Moira was released, we actually hinted at her in a few ways. Uh, one of the ones that people didn't pick up so much, or they obviously didn't draw the connection, was on the Oasis map, 
before a match would start, Reaper would mention that he's visiting an old friend, and this old friend is Moira. We had this idea of a scientist who is related to Reyes and to Blackwatch, and so while we didn't know the specific details about the character, we knew that there was this space in the Overwatch universe that we wanted to fill. So when we were looking at who the next support character was going to be, we felt like Moira would be a great option, and her character really came out of that. Moira is voiced by Genevieve O'Reilly. Symmetra. Everything in Overwatch is sort of couched in this science fiction terminology, but we don't really get too much into the nitty gritty. So when we were developing the idea of Symmetra, who is this engineer who literally creates things, in her case, defenses, teleporters, shield generators out of light, we talked about a number of different ways we'd describe her technology. For example, we said, what about like photonic engineering or something? And ultimately we decided that Overwatch isn't really a universe about the specifics of the science that we're um, applying. and so we came up with this phrase, hard light, which it doesn't really mean anything, but if I tell you she engineers things out of hard light, you're like, okay, I kind of understand that, and we don't have to really get into what's going on. Symmetra is voiced by Anjali Bamani. Zenyatta. Zenyatta is an omnic monk. At some point in Zenyatta's life, he had this awakening, he had this realization where he felt like there was more to the universe than just his pre-programmed existence. He was not the only one of the omnics that felt this way, and a number of them came together in Nepal and formed the Shambhali Monastery, which is a group of omnic monks who meditate about what it means to be alive, and in their case, what does it mean to be alive if you are a robot? They have a belief in this concept called the iris, so they talk a lot about the iris. They believe that all beings, actually not just mechanical ones, uh, ascend through the iris and can be transformed into a higher state of being. Zenyatta is voiced by Fyodor Chin. I'm Michael Chu, and those were all the heroes of Overwatch. We are Overwatch.